At the moment, I'm 77 years old. Uh, name's Ronnie Whiteway. Born and bred in Argonne. Uh, not much point of eating it now. I wouldn't be happy anywhere else. And there was always something on either the cycling club, the boxing club. I'd heard about the weightlifting club, and my brother and I both went round. Tommy McAfee, God rest his soul, uh, he was the club coach. So we joined the club, I think I was 17 at that time. There's a very old photograph in the place where we are now where it shows me and my brother. And Alec McAfee was one of our best lifters, he's in the photograph. And I think I was about 18 in that particular photograph, uh, either 1960 or maybe early 61. And thank God I've just managed to keep going. I uh, couldn't lift the cap on my head now, like, but uh, I do coaching mainly, and then I uh, go to competitions as an official. The, the, club, the original building of the club was an old wooden school hut at the bottom of Butler Street which at that time was used by the boxing club run by Charlie McCauley. It had a smaller annex on the side of the hut, and that was where we started in there. And then at a later date, the boxers moved up to St. Gabriel's, uh, St. Gabriel's School, and we took over the, the hut. And we were there for quite a few years until redevelopment, uh, just everything was knocked down. We've had a very difficult time having to continually move because of the redevelopment in Ardoin in general. But we've always managed to find somewhere to uh, set up. And we became very experienced, if you like, at moving gear, moving equipment and so on. Um, at the present time, uh, where we are now is in a gym in the Blackstaff Mill on the Springfield Road and we're doing good, we can't complain. So my name is Stephen White, um, I'm the owner of SWAT, I have been for the past four years, so next month is our fifth birthday. So for me, I try to make the place inviting for everybody, um, no matter where you're from, no matter what side you're from, you know, I just want people to come in here and have a good time, and I try to offer everything that we can. So we have pretty much an open gym where everybody can do all their own kind of workouts. We have a powerlifting section, we have an Olympic lifting section, thanks to Ronnie and St. Gabriel's. So what it was, he was actually in this unit beforehand, well not this unit, but he was in Blackstaff Mill beforehand. And um, I think they moved, they went over to somewhere close to the Ardoin shops, there was a, another unit there. One of the coaches, David Campbell, he does Olympic lifting, so he had been going there his, like, for years, you know, three nights a week, the Monday, Wednesday and Friday nights. What it was, Davey had said about, you know, potentially coming over here, and if I had the room, I was like, yep, 100%. I would, if I'll find it, I can make room for somebody to come in here. So that's what it was. Ronnie came across, had a look, loved it. Um, we came with a negotiation, a bit of, a, of what we could do for him, how we could fit him in. And that's it. He's been here since, I think it was last, pretty much a year. He came in roughly around June, July time. Good having Ronnie in general because the wealth of experience that man has is insane. You know, the fact that he's like a world Olympic lifting referee, he's done Olympic lifting his whole life, he's done powerlifting. You know, any kind of act, certain type of sport, Ronnie has either tried it himself, knows somebody who's done it, or even trained them in it. So to have that knowledge in here is unbelievable because you just, at any point, and you know yourself, Ronnie, you ask him a question, you're going to beat it for the next half an hour. But in that half hour, you'll get more info from that than you would do looking at a course for like three or four months. Ronnie just knows everything. And then the people he's brought in as well, they all know their own, their own things as well. So it's good having different people, you know. Yes, Ronnie might teach us how to do something one way, but the people he's taught will then kind of get their own way kind of, and then they'll teach you and it's good. So you kind of, you get in two, three, four different people tell you different things and they're all brilliant information. So you can kind of take what you need and then go with it yourself instead of being told by one person, 
it was always good to try and get a few different people, but with having Ronnie in is brilliant. The equipment alone as well has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, just the whole, with Ronnie coming in and St. Gabriel's coming in, it's just kind of lifted the gym. It's kind of taken it to the next level. It's something that not all gyms have. You know, you'll get gyms that will try and get the stuff in. They'll buy the equipment, they'll, they'll buy the platforms, the bars, and but if you don't have somebody like Ronnie or people who have done Olympic lifting, all that kind of stuff, it's like, I, I could throw it up, I could bring it up, I could put a ring in next door. It's brilliant to the fact that I have that, but it, made, it, was, it wouldn't make sense if I just got a ring. I was like, right, off you go, but there's nobody there to kind of teach you what to do. So thankfully, having Ronnie in here and the St. Gabriel's has just lifted the gym to like a new level. My achievements over the years, um, in some ways modest enough, I, I, in weightlifting, I did win the Irish Junior and Intermediate titles. Uh, my best in the Irish Senior Championships was a third. In weightlifting, you have two sports. You have Olympic weightlifting and you have powerlifting. At that time, we indulged in both of them. And I found out that I was better at powerlifting. So I persevered with that. And in 1973, four and five, I won the Irish Powerlifting Championship and was selected in 1975 to represent Ireland at the World Championships, which was a great achievement. Uh, I had a really good time. And I like to say that uh, in a small way, I didn't finish last, you know, because most times when you get people from the smaller countries, you go to represent yourself at the World Championships, but I, I really enjoyed the, the experience of the whole thing. Because when you go to the World Championships, even though when you're talking, I mean, I spoke to a couple of guys, uh, two Americans, who were the current World Champions. No airs and graces about them, very easy to talk to. And I got a, I got a bit of advice from uh, one of them. In powerlifting, you have three lifts, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. And in the bench press, I was not very good. And when I finished the competition, my group, this American fella came over, and he said, uh, typically American, but nice, nice easy spoken, he said to me, you're not very good at that bench press. I said, no, it's my weak lift. He said, do you do dips? I said, no. He said, Get yourself a dipping rack and start doing dips. And he said, you'll find that'll benefit you. Which I did, and my bench press did improve quite a bit. And that was from a guy who was a world champion who was good enough to take the time to give you advice. St. Gabriel's was known as an open door. And we, we had weightlifters from all over Belfast, especially on a Sunday. Most of them, apparently, their clubs didn't open on a Sunday, whereas we did. And we had people from the Shankill, West Belfast, East Belfast. Uh, one in particular, a man called Sammy Dalzell, who was Irish bantamweight champion, uh, great lifter. They all came on a Sunday. Uh, we all mucked in together. We didn't have a, the, the greatest of equipment at that time, but we had a great time. And it was nothing unusual. Uh, I, I, talk, I talk about this with a bit of a smile on my face that during the week, say for talk sake, a Wednesday night, you had been in training, we had all the different age groups, and the door would have suddenly just opened up, and then would have walked three police constables, uniform and all on, and one of them would have looked up and seen my coach, Tommy McAfee, and he'd have said, all right, Tommy, how's it going? Doing well, Jack, you coming in for a visit? Yes, we thought we'd call in and do a wee bit. And they would have just took the uniform coats off, the gun, hung them up, did a workout for about maybe 40, 45 minutes. The, car, the crack was good. We really enjoyed it. And then when they finished the workout, they said, right, now we've got to go back out in the beat again, put the uniform on, and away they went. That was regular. That was never a problem. And it was just unfortunate that the troubles broke out and unfortunately they, um, they were unable to continue to do what they wanted to do. That was one thing. Another thing um, in the history of the club was uh, most people will know of or heard of uh, Mary Peters, now known as Dame Mary Peters. 
Well, her coach was a man called Buster McShane, who was a very good weightlifter himself, but a wonderful coach. And he was coaching her for, I think it was the Jamaica Games, Commonwealth Games in Jamaica. And his club wasn't available for weekends where Mary had to do a bit of extra training. So everybody knew about St. Gabe's, brought Mary up to train with us. And she trained with us for a few months, just at weekends, to get herself ready for the, the Commonwealth Games in Jamaica. And I, I know Mary, um, I've met her a few times at different meetings at, in, the, in the City Hall. And she always mentions um, St. Gabriel's, the time that she had there. It was, it's nice that someone in her position still has fond memories of the times she trained with us. Weightlifting is classed as a minority sport because of the numbers who actually participate in it. But it's a sport that does require a lot of dedication. And people who come to me to learn it, within three, four, five weeks, sometimes they will just pause and they will say, I didn't realize this sport was so hard to learn. But it's like I said to them, it's like swimming and riding a bike. Once you do learn it, if you learn it properly, you'll not forget it. I have a young fella, well, I had a young fella, and John joined the club when he was about 14 or 15. And he went on to win both Northern Ireland, Irish and British titles. Uh, he was British junior champion when he was 18 represented Northern Ireland at the Commonwealth Youth Games in Australia, where he won a bronze medal. Gregory lad, but just decided that uh, he wanted to join the army. So what do you do? I just said, well, if that's what you want to do. I did phone his father about it, you know, and his father says, well, he's 18, and he said that's what he wants to do. And I said, well, okay. But it's a sad loss to the sport because he, he had great potential. And it was just, life does these things. But any, anybody who's stuck it, I mean, in all sports now, you, you quite often you'll hear them talking about masters uh, weightlifting or masters swimming. And in weightlifting, we have, it's a very strong uh, part of weightlifting, it's masters weightlifting. And there are people, men and women alike, in their 50s, some of them in their 60s and a few in their 70s still competing. And it's keeping them. Doctors would tell you if you keep doing any particular sport, you're going to, if, as long as you avoid serious injuries or whatever, that sport will help you in later life to be able to cope with what they term old age. And people say to me, why do you do that? I said, because I can. I'm not going to be competing anymore, but I still go, into, go to the gym five mornings a week, do my 45 minutes, and that helps me to cope with what I have to do in normal life. The young fellow I mentioned earlier who decided to join the army, he's been in the army now, I think, 11 years, and he has called back to the club on two or three occasions in that time. And within one day, two days, you thought he never left the club because his, his ability, after a couple of days back training, he just looks like he never left. It, it was just so well ingrained into him. And he says, stood by him, because when he joined the army, then he had to do all sorts of whatever the training is. and. Uh, so whatever it is, whatever the sport would be, if you persevere with it and learn to do it right. I mean, men that I've known over the years who were in the boxing club, the cycling club, you can see that when they get into the later years, 40, 45, 50 and so on, you can see that the benefit they are still getting from all that physical activity that they took part in. St. Gabriel's, um, I'm not saying it doesn't apply to other clubs, uh, either in boxing or swimming or whatever, but St. Gabriel's has always had the reputation. Open door, your, your religion, your politics, 
doesn't doesn't matter. You come in here, you come in to do weightlifting and weight training, and that's all. The only rule we have in the club is no colours. Now, when I say no colours, I mean we don't wear Celtic tops, Rangers tops, whatever. Your your clothing has to be completely neutral, except for me. I have to wear the coach's one, but. Uh, so the, the, that attitude, we have had all sorts coming, still do, still do. If anybody asked me, what religion is that fella or that fella, I couldn't tell them. Because it, it's of no interest. He's there for one purpose, to do weight training or weight lifting. And as long as they want to do that, I'm quite happy to teach him how to do it. And we've had, as I say, people from North, East, South and West Belfast. We've had students who have come from different countries, studying at Queen's University. They wanted to find out about weightlifting, and someone said, go to St. Gabe's, they'll look after you. And we've had a couple of fellows who were Muslims, a couple of guys whose religion I would have had no idea what they might have been. Didn't matter. They came in, they enjoyed the time they were there, and then one went back to Canada. I get, I get text messages from him every now and again. The other boy, he went to Australia, uh, doing well, I, I, I think, you know. Um, so religion, politics, whatever, doesn't exist. And it's not, you don't mention it either. Absolutely. If somebody forgot themselves and said something, I would politely just say, in here, weightlifting only. If you feel that you can try it, I, I have to do what they call a functional assessment to find out what you can or can't do. Some people, um, depending on their own lifestyle, tend to be a little bit tight, need to loosen them up a little bit. But that's, that can be easily um, checked over whenever they call up. So if they need to find out any, anywhere about um, the name, address, phone numbers, Go on to Facebook, type in St. Gabriel's Weightlifting Club or SWAT Gym, S-W-A-T, and they'll get any information they need there.